What is going on, everybody? Welcome to week number five of year number four of the Big 12 Team Builder Dynasty. We're kicking this one off with a pretty cool matchup. I like that blue and that gold and black and white. You got a blue out, but half of the stadium didn't get the memo. So, and, well, they got their yellow and some white in there. There's some communication errors yeah. going on at, on campus on uh, Friday. That's okay, though. We got undefeated Ardmore against... UCF and UCF is going to probably pose us a challenge, I would assume. Yeah, this isn't the undefeated UCF, the 26 and 1 or whatever they were the last two years. They're, they're still pretty solid, though. So, this will be a, a pretty good challenge. John Hicks going deep there to tight end Eric Buchanan. A lot of tight windows right now. Jake Wood, we saw that catch, and then AO Chiquendo had that first catch of the game. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but. We're going to rely on that ground game that has been so reliable thus far in the season. And Brent Guerrero getting the touchdown. It's just it's like next man up mentality for this Ardmore rushing. It's a machine. Okay. Here's Daryl Mack Jr. First play of the game for the Knights. Marlon Williams with a 14-yard catch. Mack, though, going down here. A loss of five. Boyd Scales. All right, Boyd Scales. You got Boyd Scales and Carl Boyd. I know. I can't keep track of it's, these guys. It's very strange. And then we also have Alex Williams and Derek Andrews. Total, I mean, it's a new look. Secondary. So you guys are going to have to step up in this game. And we do. So we get the, we get a stop, but John Hicks can get dropped for an 11-yard loss. So he kind of had um, Nebraska State quarterback uh, Yeah, I thought about that when I saw this. Oh, no. This play, though, is going to the house. But Your safety got tripped up. Yep, freshman Derek Andrews just could not make a decision on what he was going to do with that running back. And you guys can see it real quick. There's the glimpse there. I mean, look at that. He just got sucked into that that block. And then watch as the running back makes his move. He's like, oh, whoa, I'm going to follow. And, oh, oh, no, I, I can't. Uh, oh, crap. Yeah, that's bad. It's bad. That's a, it's a rookie mistake. It's a freshman play. Yep. So we're going to fire it deep out here to the to the right and Leando Ransom. Not going to be able to make the play. That and, was my fault. And um, yeah, whose fault was that? That was mine. You want to said, explain you, it? Yeah, I just said, you got B. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. I enticed you to throw it over there. Every time I tell him to do something, it's wrong. I'm not doing it to be, I'm not doing it in bad faith. It's just, it's just how it goes. We should do a live one. Just eventually. Okay. At one point. Daryl Max see, Jr. down at the. Down at the one yard line. And then first and goal. And we, we get a stop right here. Richardson, Donathy. Donathy, one yard line. Second and goal. Can we get a stop, please? Oh, not Almost. down at the one yard line. Almost. But Mac Jr. going to get in for a touchdown. And UCF just like that off the turnover. Look at that. He's got the moves going today. They're up seven. Hicks rolling out to the right because nobody's open. There's some Nebraska. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What a move. Hicksy boy, 21 yards, nice, first and 10. Here's a pass to Vinny Peck on the drag route. Only gonna get four, All right. but that's okay. We're I setting mean, them up, we're setting them up. Just gotta take what's given to you at this point. We don't want another turnover. Right. Second and six, and look at Guerrero powering through. Touchdown. Almost down at the one, but Guerrero he will not be denied. Will not be denied. So we tie the football game 14 to 14. Mac Jr. throwing it out of bounds. Great defense. Nothing open. Great Th defense. Third and 10. We'll take it. Third and 10. Bombing it out there deep and digs. Almost picks it off. And then um, Andrews, the <laughs> freshman. <laughs> could have picked that off. He, he could easily could have picked he, it off. He starts doing the scooter. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> That's what I call that move. It's first. like, what are you doing, man? You're, you shouldn't even be out here. Here's Hicks. Oh, oh no. Hicks fumbles the football. That's on you. That's That one's on me. That turnover is... Definitely, definitely on me. But to keep it interesting, Get Hicks, greedy. what are you doing? Now you're getting greedy, man. Second and nine. Here's screen. a screen pass. We get it stopped for one yard reception. Third and eight. And here's oh. Mac weaving his way through the defense. And we look like we get him stopped short. We do not. He gets the first down. Here's a field goal attempt to end the half. And Odell Streeter, make a play, baby. Make a, make a play. Go, go. You got a beat. Now, that one on armchair quarterback, I said cut left. 
I know, and I didn't trust Start you. left. I and didn't trust you. Though. You'd have, like, the kick six, you know, all the big guys out there. Oh, God. Let's start the third quarter. Oh, God. And UCF gets a huge gain. Otis Anderson for 33 yards off a bubble screen. Yep, here's a little halfback base action. Shotgun, got that pulling pulling guard. They're ninjas, though. Nice, guys. Nice. Good plays. Good plays all around on D right now. Andrews with the tackle. He actually came in in a little run support. And look at this. It Going. banks off the inside of the pole. Watch this one more time. It banks off the inside and bounces oh, out. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay, then. You got some weird stuff going on in this non-conference. Oh, season. Zach Flores with the block out front, and Hicks is gone. 48-yard touchdown, and we are up now, 21-14. to 14. Hicks has got so much speed at quarterback. It's like if you just give him one block, you can spring him. I was hoping he would dive right there. I know. Yeah. I'm not very flashy. That's like, my signature move. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> You've made a... You've made a killing on that move, so yes. I don't even attempt it anymore. Second and four. We don't get the stop. Daryl Mac for nine. Gonna get that first down. Second and five. Bubble screen. Oh, it's picked off by Carl Boyd. That's his second interception this year. The other Boyd gets the INT, so this time the defense read it. They got burned by Otis a couple plays ago. This time they read it, so... Now you're going screen to Chiquendu. That's a play I never run. Uh, I like to run it every now and then, but you got to make sure that that corner is playing off. That's yeah. really the only time you do it. First and 10 and Guerrero. Only going to get one, so we're starting to get him involved a little bit extra after the, some of those touchdowns. And Hicks was, I was looking for A right there, but it was just a little bit too covered. Third and nine, Hicks rolling out, trying to make something happen. And we are going to get the first down as he slides. He slides at the very last second to get that first down and take take a look here we do a little screen slash motion play to get him thinking we're going the other way we go to jake wood on the screen he's going to get a touchdown 28 to 14. smart tremaine young calling plays for he, the thunder Wolves. he's a play caller by the way did you see the dive we dove yeah, on that one that was cool and like Derek it. andrews again um pick it off dude well, now he's starting to realize that, yeah, I, I could make interceptions, and I failed this time <laughs> versus the previous time when he was excited and oblivious. It, it, yeah, so. Right, but there's a learning curve. Yeah. There's a learning curve here, but really nice play by Florencio Woolridge. Florencio. Let's get that sack, and then another sack is going to be had at the, by the hands of Florencio Woolridge. So he has taken over on that drive, and look at Odell Streeter. On third and 14? Yeah, you run, ran that play? Running the football, and yeah, that is like the dagger, guys. I don't know how you feel after that one as a defense, you know, knowing that you gave that one up, and then it's gonna lead to this score, to Chiquendu. It's now 35 to 14, three minutes in the fourth to go. So Ardmore should coast to victory here and get this W. However, however, it's two all, minutes left on the board. Always interesting with the Thunder Wolves. And, uh-oh, Andrew's getting turned uh, around again. And again, he gets it. <laughs> Jacobs better make this down. Oh, the linebacker, Anthony Jacobs, has to come all the way over to make a tackle. That he, is terrible. Yeah, he's swagged out, too. He is. I like, I like him. And then uh, Young can't follow his man in the corner. And they're going to get the touchdown. So... They go with the onside kick. Buchanan recovers. He's got a little bit of green to go. Okay. And so now we're in a little bit we're in a little bit more better business here. Yeah. Plus the last five drives. I mean, tough to beat that. Ardmore will win. UCF scores another touchdown. Really meaningless touchdown. But Ardmore gets the W, and you guys move to 4-0. So congratulations. You yeah. had a pretty good non-conference schedule and you smooth sailing. We're looking good right now with that run game especially. Defense, shoddy, it's the same story every week. Yeah. We just got some things to clean up. Let's talk about Nebraska State and Ball State. This is a kind of ESPN3 matchup. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with that. At three o'clock. Maybe ESPNU, you know, maybe we get the eight o'clock treatment. I don't know. One of my favorite logos, I love the Ball State logo. I pray they never change it. 
It's which very, they, it's coming. Yeah, I know. It's coming. It's gonna be some flashy two yeah. color thing. Some cool looking bird, but nothing's cooler than the Robo <laughs> Bird. Oh, oh, Nebraska oh. State though. John Tavius Nichols. John Tavius Nichols with the great spin move. That's gonna set the tone for this game off right. You didn't dive. Yeah, I know. You didn't dive. I know. I was a little too. I don't know if I was geared up or I was just excited when I when they broke this loose. Woo. That is a really tight spin move right there. Hey, now, Ball State's 2-0. They've beaten Memphis and Indiana on the road, so Nebraska State doesn't scare them at all. They're going to start this game running the football with Keeling. Uh, and gone. look at the blocking on that play. They he's just gone. they engage every one of us, and we couldn't get off. Brathwaite can't make the tackle, and into the hashtag go dogs. End zone goes Keeling, and Ball State just ties it up right away. So I said Ball State could be competitive in this matchup, and so far after possession. Oh, hey, look at this defense. Zero yards on that defense. Good job for the they're, defense they're so far. so good. Yeah. Good job, EA. <laughs> First play of the game, though, they do gang tackle us. Derek Smith gets the reception from Graham Keith, and he can't make it. We're going for it, though. We got fourth and one. Shinovsky's out there at wideout. So they have to let us know every time the backup quarterback's on the field. Yeah. Let's see if we can get Good this. Job. Good job, EA. Fourth and one. Graham Keith's calling a play out there. Let's see if we can hit Shinovsky, and he's going to lead him behind the line. Oh, I thought he uh, caught it. I thought he caught it. No, he did. It was just short. Wow. The throw took him out of bounds, slightly behind the line to gain. Third and 12, though. So Ball State going to pick up this first down. That call so far backfiring in a big way. Did Shinovsky... Um, not stay in, stay uh, ahead of that line just because he was trying to force Keith out of the game? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. He's a good teammate. That's kind of his MO. Deep throw there. Graham Keith, nothing doing. 3 of 5 for 12 so far as we enter late in the first. Ball State getting a huge play. That's Khalil Newton. Gets flipped over. Brathwaite trying to come back in, but duck it. It's going to get sacked by... Joey Water. Shanka. Then Mr. Shanka. Third and nine and almost picked off by Eric Dixon. This guy makes plays. Yeah, he's uh, always involved. Second and inches. We got Keith looking deep. Oh, oh, some miscommunication with Derek Smith. And it's going the other way to Anderson. Not good. And yeah, I, uh, it's just not good. You guys are playing down your competition right now. We really are. Although, I, I mean, I, I respect Ball State. I respect them. Although I didn't when I went for it, I'm fourth in my own territory, but <laughs> I respect them. Second and 14, look at this play by Brathwaite. We're gonna push Keeling back, and he doesn't get forward progress, because you see there, he moves forward again. So we kind of tricked him. Third and 11 though, and we leave Newton wide open. Look at that play. It's still in bounds, cost us about another 10 yards. First and 10, a little play action, and going to the outside. Gonna pick up 13, so for another first down, they are killing you guys on the out routes, it looks like. And the power and the will by David Keeling down gonna get the, down at the one yard line. And oh yeah, got that sack on Duckett. It's a really nice play. Really nice play on that D line. It's third, gonna hold, boys. Third and goal. Another play action pass, and this is gonna fall incomplete as the big hit came on to duck it. So they do get a field goal, 13 to seven. You guys are still oh. in the game, but a drop by who? Shinovsky. Shinovsky. Is your theory correct? I don't know. I mean, it's looking that way, isn't it? Third and 10 right now, Graham Keith, four of 10 on the day. And here is a pass to Shinovsky, who lets it go through his fingers. Keep What's your friends close. And your enemies closer, as they say. <laughs> And an almost interception here. Will it count though as a incomplete pass? No, because Eric Dixon guilty of roughing the passer. I always like to check those out. And apparently we clipped him, barely. We touched him. Keeling going to go inside the five. You well, breathe second on and inches. Yeah. Second and inches here for Duckett. John Duckett. Oh wow. Goes to Nolan. Given? Given? Gavin. 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 Javon. Javon. <laughs> I'm not sure how to say that. Ball he, State takes the lead. And a Super Sim missed extra points, so I owe them one. 
L O Ball State one. Good and return then, by John Tavis oh Nichols. A far cry from his first kickoff in the game. And what, is, what is happening? I don't know what's going on here. So we we're bringing in Shinovsky a little bit, trying to spark the offense. Try to get him running read option. We got him throwing here on second and three. I'm going underneath to Jeff Anderson. Let's see if we can get something going here, man. We've been stalling all day. Graham Keith on third and six. Like, tell me who's open right now. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody's open. And then almost picked off in almost triple coverage. Keith is now four of 13 for 29 yards and a pick. Wow. It's okay. just it's just brutal going right now. You guys are down 12. You need big plays out of your defense. You do get that one. So you get the football back. And Shinoski. Oh, Kimberling. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Get in the end zone. Down at the two-yard line. Two, but look. Oh, my gosh, that move. Yeah, that was uh, awesome. I swear, I don't see these games because you took the Xbox home. Yeah. That's the first time I've seen that play. My goodness, I did good. not anticipate that. LaBelle on the speed option. Shinoski checks into down the game. The, down at the one yard line. They go into the quarterback sneak, and he gets in but takes a big hit. Then he got flipped up. Hashtag physics. All right. Got a lot of physics. So I gave him the extra point back, so all is fair. 19 to 13. Zaire Sullivan with the deflection. 35 seconds left. Nothing doing for the rest of that half. 19 to 13. They had a chance out there, and Sullivan made that play. So, guys, that's not looking great right now. We get the stop, though, on the first possession, but we have to do something and do something rash. Ben Janoski's in at quarterback for the remainder of this half, unless he can't get anything going. We will see. We're going for this, though. Landon Wade, the fullback, up the middle for four yards. So maybe Shinasi is going to spark this offense. Dante LaBelle finally getting some running lanes. Finally. Yeah, it's really it's really good to see. I mean, he's been kind of laboring through some of these games as of late. So, yeah, a good six-yard rush there. The first down on the, the previous series right there. And now we got Corey Hargrove up the middle. You guys love that play with Hargrove. They just seem to... Really open that red sea for him. Yep, Schnowski gets wide open. Shane Pryor for a four-yard touchdown. Ball State's, what was that, engage 10? Because they had nobody, they they had almost have nobody back there. Yeah. Easy, easy touchdown. Missed tackle here, though. We had Ball State on the ropes. We got a 20 to 19 lead here. But Duckett looking downfield, nothing doing. It's going to get sacked Shanka. again by Joey Shanka, the All-American Joey Shanka. He's really stepping up in his last two seasons here at NSU. Third down and six. They're only going to get one. So Nebraska State back here with the football. And look at Hargrove no! move, and he fumbles the ball. No. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, no, guys. We had this game on cruise control. Oh, no. And the ball pops out. Duckett drops back. Safety. Safety. Oh, 22 to 19. How do you take a sack from that far out? Because he's rolling out like he does the Gunner Rivers thing. What are you doing? Just walked into it, man. Uh, come on, man. You had an A, by the way. I Yeah, we're going to uh, look at this. Let's see out here. Shinoski was out there. So we had Keith in on that play. Janoski just trotting out there wide But open. he was wide open. Guess who Keith didn't throw to? He didn't trust him. He didn't trust him. He didn't Shinovsky. trust him. Ball State has a chance, though, to tie this game or win it. But this line is not going to hold up. Man, they are taking Duggan. Come on, Gonsu. <laughs> it's a school here today. Gonsu. Gonsu. No. Oh, no. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Okay. If they get a field goal, guys. We're going to overtime. We go to overtime. First and ten. Duck it. Feeling the pressure. He falls the football. Another sack. I've lost count. I think we have seven. I think it was probably about seven. Third and 15. They're running the football. They they watch the Ardmore game. They're like, we can do this. Wow. Draw play. They're going for it, though. Fourth and eight. And Duckett just takes off. And we had good coverage on that play. Duckett bailed on it. Decided to run with it. So we're going to try to grind this clock down. Ball State now out of timeouts. Shinoski, they took the pitch away from him. <sighs> Negative three-yard rush. Shinoski is going to punt, try to pin him. We're going to grind that clock down all the way that we can. There's the punt and a bad punt by Shinoski. We're trying to angle it. And it's going to sail into the end Give them another shot. They've had three chances to get a touchdown or a field goal Some against you guys. And here is on second and ten here is a two-yard reception, Wyatt Plate. 
Duck it up the middle to Newton. Got to get that first down. Stop the clock. He does. He got a second and ten here. Seven seconds. Let's get some pressure, boys. Shaka going after him. Sullivan can't make the INT. One second left, and we know that our Hail Mary defense has been suspect. Let's do it. Third and ten. Joey Shanka. The Puma tackle. The Puma. Panther-like tackle. Yes. To end the game, Ben Shinovsky is player of the game. He came in in the second half, and he gets player of the game. <laughs> Even though he's, of the game? he screwed over Graham Keith. Yeah, he had those extra points, you know. Oh my god. I, I did not have him miss the, the extra point. The stat stuffer. It was the backup. Was he, it's, what did that say? He was 11 of 20? 11 of like 17. Like 100, 100 something yards? Yeah. That's not player. Well, our offense here. was garbage at all game. Let's look at this game. We'll talk about that one some more. Let's look at this game where the offenses do not figure to be garbage. Jesse Tyson, sleeper Heisman candidate, up the middle for 14 yards. Notre Dame and Midland going to Jerry World. Neutral, sit, neutral site game. Should be a pretty fun one here. A little mid-season clash. I think so. I would agree with that. Primetime ABC. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. And there's a touchdown early to Dylan Fowler for 23. I mean, this was... I didn't anticipate this already for for Midland State. Dexter Whiteside, 4-4, had that nice touchdown pass. Like He's looking pretty good against his A-plus Notre Dame defense. If you guys remember, yeah. I, did, I picked Notre Dame. I did too. And only because of that defense. Well, that. we know I, that... I know it's a little spotty. We know that this Midland State secondary is a little bit suspect, and Notre Dame is going to want to attack that. You got Ian Book. You guys remember Ian Book? He was he made his debut in uh, episode one of our series here. He mm. came in against ACU because uh, there was an injury. But he's going to get a touchdown here. Let's look at this. Yeah, Komet made it hard on himself, but he does beat the one-yard line monster and will score. So we have a tied game. We're talking about it. So the book on Midland, secondary struggling. They're running the ball. You guys remember the championship game in the Big 12 last year? Whiteside choked it away. Whiteside trying to beat his demons this season. Well, just he's on his way to doing it today. Just, just redeem himself. Rex Austin gets a touchdown. And now he's 10 of 10, guys. He's 10 of 10 in the first quarter. Looking really sharp, throwing a tight spiral there. 30 seconds left in the first. Still a dump off pass to Cole Kmet for 13. Midland, where's the defense? Last play of the first. Oh, we got a fumble picked up by Tommy Kramer. And we're going to close the first quarter. 14 to 7. Book on third down. Slips through. Flips it underneath. And they get the first down. That is, that's unreal. That is absolutely unreal. That's just something you can't have. You got to wrap him up. Ian Book slides down at the down at the one. He slides down at the one. He, he could have waited just a like a millisecond. <laughs> oh, look later. at this and touchdown. a dive in the end zone and Javon McKinley gonna get Book. a touchdown there. Ian Book's perfect. 15 for 15. Both quarterbacks are playing really well right now. So far, Jesse Tyson up the middle. Gonna pick up about 20 plus on that one. He's eight for 79 right now. Whiteside drop back. He's going to fire it deep, and he's got his man to the right. That is Dallas win for 34. Nice. So 5'10". They do the hurry up. They get it going. Ooh. We got a little flag right here. Got a face mask. Going to be half the distance to the goal. Midland State is this, charging. Is this Jesse Tyson time right here? Could be at the one-yard line. Jesse Tyson's going to take it in. One-yard score. Had those stats, Jesse. Had them, man. So we've already got 35 points in the first half. And wow. then this bomb. Total <laughs> missed tackle. Oh, a man. total missed tackle. What was that? You couldn't miss a tackle more than he did. That was the next play, I believe, after Midland's touchdown. Let's look at this. That's Flores safety. What? <laughs> Where he's, are you? He's past you, man. He's like, oh, whoa, whoa, where are you? He, he walked past you a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> Whiteside going deep, trying to respond. Touchdown. Touchdown. Midland State, that's Ulysses Neely. Scoring from Man. long distance. These defenses are not showing up tonight. Got a long distance house call right there. Oh, I just came up with that. Yeah, that's a, I like it. Maybe. I don't know if I'll NCAA, use that. NCAA. Would you? We pay? love the NCAA. Let's do a poll. 
in the comment section. Would you guys go to a football game that you're spending a ton of crap ton of money and you're obviously, obviously a fan of Midland State? Would you paint your body in Midland State colors saying NCAA? We heart the NCAA. Midland State going deep again. Ulysses Neely, they got 53 seconds to make something happen here. Man, they could, they could really hurt Notre Dame right here with the late touchdown. That's going to sting when they do score. Dylan Fowler ends up seven yards out of the end zone, but he gets a touchdown. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> You've never seen that before. It's just... It's, I've seen it in this game. Just yeah. in real life. You right. Imagine. No, they just fall into the end zone. No. Ian like, Book picked off. Going the other way. Midland can do even more damage before the half. They got 32 seconds in a timeout. Trayvon Blunt, the only good secondary player in this defensive backfield for Midland State. Stepping up, makes the INT. Whiteside, third and 10, trying to go deep again. This oh, one almost, got dropped INT. Almost picked off, so we're going to go into the half. Up 14 points, 35 to 21. There is no shortage of offense. And again, I honestly thought this was going to be more of a defensive battle, but I'm glad it wasn't because yeah. this is entertaining right now. Definitely. Notre Dame goes inside the five now. Second and goal. Book going to find somebody. Guys. Mark Harris. Guys, clean it up. Two incomplete passes for Book. you got a lead right now. Don't just start letting him have it. Bam, that one's oh. going deep. Ulysses with another diving catch. He's looking pretty good today. Upping that NFL stock is Ulysses Neely. For sure. Here's Rex Austin for a three-yard catch. Not going to get the first down. He ran out of bounds. Settle for the field goal and a miss. So is Midland State going to let them back in it? It's 35-28. They're down a touchdown. And now Book is starting to just sling it. I mean, look at this. He's faking them out. He's throwing it deep to Jafar Armstrong. Got that touchdown, and now the game's tied. 30 of 32 for Ian Book. He wrote the book on how to beat Midland State's secondary so yeah. far by the look of it. Yeah, I'm having Aladdin flashbacks. That's Aladdin Jafar. 2, the Jafar. return of Jafar. <laughs> You guys remember that one? <laughs> Direct to VHS, I believe. Yeah, exactly. First, no, second and ten. Excuse me, now you got me all thinking about Disney. <laughs> Here's a catch to Caught. the left. Dallas win right there. And look at the big Jesse. man go. Jesse Tyson going to get in for six. And just like that, Midland State gets the lead back. So we've got this back and forth seesaw type of deal going on and he broke off against three guys right there to get that touchdown so you think he's determined four minutes left in the game so this game i mean sellout crowd national tv folks are loving it going inside the five mckinley gonna pick up the first down third down conversion is good notre dame going inside to fullback larry sullivan down at the one yard line one yard line fourth and goal aggressive Wow, they went for it. C.J. Holmes, it pays off. We got a tied ball game here. 225. Let's see if Midland's going to bomb it and chuck it deep. They do. It's picked off. Going the other way. And Whiteside chokes. He chokes again. Well, hold on. It's two, You got two minutes. You got two minutes. It could go the other way. Ian Book, though, has been really good. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Second and eight, blocking out front. And now I, I think I think we can say that he choked because well he choked regardless of what happens later. Maybe Midland wins, but he still choked in that situation. Yes. Yeah. Third and five, Jafar's going out with fourth and one, and we get a false start here. And Notre Dame saying, "Hey, let's make it harder on ourselves." Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's, let's just go. Let's push ourselves back a little bit. Let's make the field goal a lot more difficult. And well, they make it. 45 to 42. And he's coming out. Coming out. Dexter Whiteside, second and 11. Flipping it up into coverage. I don't know how he completed that pass. How was that caught by Rex Austin? First and 10, 108. He's done a Hail Mary before. Oh! A strike. Go! Go, man. Go! Touchdown. Dylan Fowler. Midland State. Head coach Phil and Michaels pumping up the defense, saying, let's finish this. Man, that was a line drive throw right there. Man, that's a risky, risky pass. Dylan Fowler and Midland fans trying to pump up the defense. So far, yeah. it's not working. You guys missed a, a D or an E. You missed an E. So far, their cheering has not worked for the defense. But look at that. 
Ian Book going down for a loss of eight. They got to convert this third and 13 in between four defenders. Wow, dropped it right in the bucket. 39 seconds left. Book feeling the pressure. Oh. He's going to get dropped, guys. So everything's looking good, right? 22 seconds left. Book bombing it deep. No! Nobody's to the right. Nobody. Tackle him. Tackle him. McKinley for 48. 15 seconds to go. Notre Dame. Dropping back. Book. He's going to go to the oh. end zone. Touchdown. Notre Dame in the back of the end zone. Oh, Midland State. Nine seconds to go. And they are now down 51 to 49. And Book is just letting it go in this game. Safety didn't do anything there. He's like, hey, man, that was a good catch. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Let me sip of my Take water. Take sip. Two One seconds. Second. This is it. And <sighs> Whiteside cannot make a throw downfield, guys. And Midland State is going to lose to Notre Dame in dramatic fashion. And it just seems like this is what Midland State does. We saw this, la we saw this last year against McAllen. Bad, they bad loss. Okay, a little, pretty lackluster win for ACU, 42 to nothing. I would say, yeah. 42 to nothing. I'm just looking at this, there's not a lot of action on here. You know, it just seems like a very small box It score. seems like a boring game. Yeah. Six touchdowns. Just kidding. This is obviously being Whoa. facetious, everybody. 617 yards for ACU. They did it again. Yeah. It had 600 against UConn. So let's look at the numbers here. Joe Russell, 304 and 3. And then Leonard David, 24, 165. Penner, 9 for 69. And you see the receivers, Kirk and Ostrander, really lit it up. Penner had a receiving touchdown. Nice to see that Penner is starting to get a little bit more involved in this offense. Odessa beats UTEP as if this was a surprise. 49 to 21. This offense just keeps on rolling, guys, with Cameron Willis and Paris Austin contributing big games. How about Javari McCollum? Three touchdowns as of the beginning of the second quarter. And Doug Williams, Brian Parks, chipping in with more touchdowns. 537 for Odessa State. 480 through the air. Dowdell even got a little bit of action. 53 and a touchdown. Willis, 427 and 5. And Paris Austin update? Yes, he did get another 100 yards for the fourth consecutive game. 136, but McCollum Got all the touchdowns, so I want to see Paris score a little bit more. I know, he hasn't really done that much since game number one. He but. seems like he's just a yards monster and not so much a red zone target. I think he'll get there, though. We'll see. Little Rock barely, barely holds off Navy. And it took them quite a while to do it. David McBride caught two touchdowns from Gunner Rivers in the fourth quarter. And Little Rock survives by a point. Wow, that was tough. 437 to 412. Navy had 242 yards rushing. We were so talking, we were right that yeah. this was a upset possibility. Yep, that they were just going to pound it and ground it and they were going to try to beat Little Rock into submission and they took it to him down to the wire. But Gunnar Rivers was the deciding factor. Three touchdowns for him was perfect on the game by not allowing a turnover. Only 56% though. Now Isaiah Green, 14 for 81. Manet had 32 yards rushing as well. But yeah, Lonnie Luke. I've seen Lonnie Luke post some good games recently. It's good to see that he's really taken the number one position in the receiving core, and he's doing some good things with it. And then David McBride at tight end. You were talking about it, and you think Gunnar Rivers is making David McBride. He's only, I think he's a 77 <laughs> overall. Yeah. But in this offense, he's really doing pretty well for himself. So Gunnar likes his tight ends, apparently. And McBride is going to benefit from that. So Little Rock 4-0 entering conference play. McCallan number 7 now moving to 4-0, beating UL Monroe 48-17. Was this a surprise to you? No, not a surprise. No. Good to see, though, that Andres Buckley got in the end zone. I, I saw he got vultured a little bit uh, the last couple weeks by Derek Wade. 491 of offense. Harkless had 148-1. and one. Chipped him with 72. So Harkless, we were talking about it. In the previous video, maybe having kind of a Heisman campaign. Didn't really do it today. No. Just only have one touchdown, about 200 some yards total offense. Kind of let everybody else do the work, but I yeah. guess, I guess, I mean, when we look at Wade and Buckley, 
Maybe that was just the game plan. Maybe they were putting the game plan and the win ahead of personal yeah, accolades. It's probably heartless. Don't hurt yourself today. Pretty much. Denver Tech beats Colorado. We're seeing a lot of about 20-point games here lately. Yes. So Denver Tech getting up 24 to nothing after a quarter. We talked about this. Colorado still had some talent. You know, they had the Leroy Jackson thing going and... You know, they were 1-3 and three entering play, but we th were talking maybe Colorado could put a good game plan together. New coaching staff at CU is not getting it done as they drop to 1-4. and four. Denver moving to 4-0, and oh, so they're going to outgame 457 to 386. So not the Denver Tech that we saw the first two weeks. It's still pretty dominating, dominating victory for Denver Tech, no doubt about that. Makovich 280 with 3. Napoleon McQueen 48-1. and one. Makovich also had a rushing... Touchdown, Jared Woodstrom, tight end. Tight ends are doing good this week. Yeah, and this is a total kind of a revamp of what we've expected from Denver Tech in previous years where they're just going to run the football down your throat. Seems to be more of a passing, happy team. More, well, maybe a little bit more balanced, but definitely favoring the pass. And then Hushko was 7 for 148. So yeah. Nick they're Burns, opening it up. Nick Burns only 1 for 12. So we were talking about it against Michigan. He had a breakout performance against Michigan, but... Nothing much doing here today. We saw this one. Ardmore beats UCF, and it this game was a little out of hand, but yeah, UCF, yeah. we allowed UCF to come back. They tacked down those late touchdowns there, right? But made it interesting. Yeah, they did. Three three eighty one to three sixty seven though. Hicks with one fifty one and two, and he had a hundred yards rushing. So that's yeah. good for Hicks. Yep. Yeah. Spreading the football around in that rushing attack yet again. Brent Guerrero. It's like you never know with this hydra of running backs, as Diabolus calls it. It's a good description. Um, <laughs> you never know which guy it's going to be. You know, is it going to be Guerrero? He had two touchdowns on his four attempts. Is it going to be Streeter? He busted off a few big gains. Or is it going to be Wiggins? Is the is the main guy in Jake Wood? When's he going to get the red zone touches? So, could be any one of those players. Yeah. Jake Wood with three receptions, and one of those being a touchdown. Receiving-wise, it I mean, look at what we were doing today. I mean, Leandro Ransom, all these guys are like 84 overalls, and they're just not producing because we are having so much success with the run game. I almost feel bad for the receivers that are that are left here. Yeah, it's gonna be spread out every week. That's right. just the way the offense is gonna roll. Here's another 20-ish point. Margin of victory, Shreveport beats South Alabama, 42-21. to 21. So, yeah, South Alabama got up 21-7, to 7, but Seidel Riggins, 81-yard touchdown. I mean, you see Canatella here with three touchdowns of his own. Shreveport had 419, 324 rushing. I love that. 95 only, pass. Going through the through the ball 13 times. They're not even trying anymore. <laughs> I that's love what's, that's what's beautiful about it. I love how unapologetic they are about this. Seidel Riggins 211 for two. Canatella with three. So hey, I mean, if Canatella didn't do that, maybe Riggins could have gotten five. Right. If if you're not if you're not even gonna try to, to throw the football and you're dedicated to the run, you're only going through one guy and they're running him like a running mule, man. Oh yeah. Because he is nuts. He's probably gonna be in the NFL next year. He also tacked down even three receptions for 37 yards. Player of the game, no doubt about that. Ooh. This was talk, kind of a wild game. Yeah, talk about this game. Well, we got that second half shutout. We've actually been pretty good with our second half defense this year, I've noticed. Got the safety late. Kind of, well, I can't even say that ended the game because Ball State had a, had a chance there at the end of this one. Nichols with a kickoff return, and then our offense didn't do anything. Shinovsky was okay in relief of Graham Keith, but I mean Keith we had to bad. bench him. I mean it was Keith just was bad. He was just really bad in this one. Four of fourteen. I felt like if we didn't make the switch to Shinovsky, I think we would have lost that game. I feel like we would have LaBelle ten for forty. Hargrove had forty five. Had the costly fumble there. Shinovsky with a rushing touchdown. And receiving Kimberly had himself a pretty good game. Nothing much going elsewhere. Shinovsky had a catch for zero yards, and I believe, yeah, he had the, a drop. So, could have been a lot better. Definitely got to clean things up. We're not ranked in our conference play yet, and I understand why 
because this was a bad game. It was just not very good. Notre Dame against Midland State, 52 to 49. This was not a very close game when it happened at the half. Midland State was up 14 points at the end of the half, and then they let the lead slip away by only getting one touchdown apiece in the third and the fourth. Yeah, it just was not good enough late. Whiteside, you can argue he choked. I felt like he came through when they needed him. But, I mean, we talked about it as well. This loss was on Midland State's defense, as you'll see here. 552 to 575, 487 passing. So we knew the issue was going to be Midland State's secondary. Yep. And that's going to be how everybody's going to attack this team. Yep, it's just they, way too young. I they mean, were just, totally exposed. I had a feeling that this game for Midland State was not going to be good for, for them passing the football, but that was obviously incorrect because 32 of 41 is a pretty darn good uh, ratio there and five touchdowns for one pick, 78%. It's, it's pretty good. So Whiteside actually held his own against this A-plus defense in Notre Dame, but Ian Book was insane, though, as you yeah. see there, four incomplete passes. This actually turned into a quarterback battle, yeah. like who, which one was going to break. And, you know, unfortunately, it didn't. It wasn't really a quarterback that broke. It was the defense for Midland State that broke. Yep, absolutely. Jesse Tyson, 109-2. and two. So as long as Midland wins big in the Big 12, I think Tyson can keep rolling, get into the Heisman chase. Uh, I didn't play that poorly here. I mean, he still held his own. I mean, 109-2, and two, very good game. We'll see how he plays in conference. Dylan Fowler with the three touchdowns, and then Ulysses Neely had some huge catches down the stretch. Custom recruit Colton Young had one catch. And, I mean, it's it's hard. It's hard. Midland rated kind of harshly this year. They're, they're unranked after losing this game. But entering conference play, we'll see if they can turn things around. That's going to do it for week five. Non-conference play is over. Any final thoughts on non-conference play? Uh, Big 12 cleaned up. They really did. No as, upsets. As usual. Other as than usual. Uba Tulsa was the only really bad We like result, We so. like out of conference because it get, it shows a little different side of the scheduling. Like we try to make it interesting, but we try to make them realistic games, realistic games not so much games like oh we know what they're gonna win but more so just realistic like hey this is what a bigger type of school would do so let's look ahead now to week number six and we have conference play beginning and we got three games half the league is taking a break right now but yeah we're gonna have the previews next wednesday for you guys correct correct so we will be doing our picks and previews Recruiting updates on Wednesday where we will talk about all these games and Of course where the recruiting battles are and where your custom recruits are leaning. It's gonna be fun It's gonna be a fun one. So we will see you guys on Wednesday Might even throw a little NFL update in there as well Taking a look at the Miami Dolphins how Andre Wingo is doing how Jed Carmichael's doing past Big 12 greats as they say and on other teams, too. Try to get a little stats update. So, guys, make your picks for week number six at goldglovergaming.com in the pick center for the team builder section, or the link is in the description below. Standings will be updated a little bit later on today. So, do you have any last words, sir? Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Week number six, baby. <laughs> We're already at We're almost a little bit towards the halfway point of the year already. The third. It's pretty crazy here. All right, we'll see you guys on Wednesday with Saturday, next Saturday being week number six games. Leave a like if you like this thing, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that red button for subscribe or my logo in the bottom right-hand corner. See you guys then. As always, peace.